Hey everyone, Matt here, sitting at my kitchen table, and today what we're going to talk about is the post-processing file. Now, I've talked about this a couple of times on uh, previous videos, and if someone needs the post-processing file for Fusion 360 to operate in Mach 3, email us, and I'll put this in the description below, but email us at info at twoguysmakestuff.com. And I'll be happy to send it to you. And the reason why we did that is because when we first started, we didn't have it. Someone was nice enough to give it to us. And we just continue to pay it forward. And the reason why we do a lot of these videos, these Fusion 360 videos, is because everything that you see us do, we're self-taught. And it was a struggle at first. So I understand your guys' frustration. And I want you to know that. We're here to help, and I'm here to help. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to um, do a, a little sketch on Fusion 360 and uh, extrude it, and then we'll go through how to download or input your post-processing file that either you have already or that you'll get from us into, into Fusion so that you can use that to write the G code to put into your computer for Mach 3 to understand and to be able to make your stuff and cut your art and do whatever you're going to do with it. So let's go. Let's uh, let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a sketch. We'll click this plane, which is on the front, and we're just going to do a simple rectangle. We'll do eight I'll tab by one inches. Come down here and hit fit. That brings it up. So now we see the whole thing. Now we're going to add a little bit of text to it. So I'll go up here to the create. Left click on that. Go to text. Left click on that. And then we have a type. The type is either uh, the first one, which is just you'll tell it where you want. Like uh, you'll ter tell it where you want to put the text. Or this one where you're going to text on path. Well, that's the one that we want. So then the path we're, we're going to select for this is this. Right? And then it brings this up. <clears throat> it's just a sample text. That's the default that that is in Fusion. So we don't want to say that. So we're gonna we're gonna go here and we're going to write um, test. And we have it at two and a half inches. That's that's the last thing that I did. That that's what it was. And it was on uh, this whoops this um, this font. So, so now here's a little trick. There's a lot of fonts in Fusion 360 and you can add fonts too. That could be another video if you guys like. So we've added some custom fonts, but um, to go through, so you, so you want to do your text first and you get it to the size that you want. And then if you bring your little mouse arrow over to the font, and then you, if, if you have, like we do, there's a wheel on top of the mouse, you can just scroll through and it'll change the font on your text. And you can just kind of run through them and just see which one you like, which ones you don't like, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we're just going to quickly choose one here. Let's choose, oh, uh, that looks good. Whatever that is, Bodini MT. And we'll hit OK. Now, for in order to cut this text, we want to right-click on it and you hit Explode Text. Okay, so now we have a box and we have text that's some, uh, somewhat semi-attached to it. To make, um, well, before we do that, I always like to fill at these corners. So that's too big. So we're going to change that to 0.1. That looks, we'll do 0.05. Oops, too many points. 0.05. Yeah, that looks good. That just rounds the corners off a little bit. And we'll select that corner. We're going to select this corner and that corner, and then we'll hit enter. Now all of our corners have a little bit of a radius to it. I'm going to turn off the constraints because they just kind of muck up the, the design a little bit. So there's a couple of ways you can extrude this. You can extrude each individual letter and, and this rectangle, or what I like to do sometimes is I'll come up here to the trim function and I'll trim this off. So now that's one piece. So that'll be really easy to extrude. And I'll just go through and we'll just really quickly, because this is simple. 
we'll do this, this whole design. Now this S here, and this gets a little bit tricky, and we have a couple of options. See now that's one that's one key. So now when we go to extrude this, it's gonna extrude all of this in this S, but it'll leave this as a little bit of a space. Now, depending on how big this is, your plasma cutter may not be able to get in there. So what we're gonna do is we'll just trim that and we'll just make that one piece. And we'll go here to the T. And you'll see here now when I go to now the next step is we'll go up here on the on the right and hit finish sketch. And then we come over here to extrude. Left click on extrude. And it already brings up this profile. So now I just need to tell it how thick the material is going to be. And we're going to use 16 gauge. So I'll just do 0 0.06. And there we go. There's our little test piece. Now from this, this is all done. This drawing is done. So from here, we want to go up to design and you left click on design. And you go to manufacture. When it comes to the manufacturer, this is where we're going to, this is where we're going to write the G code and convert it to a mock three file. So the first thing you need to do is you're going to go to setup, new setup. And then, so I'm back. We're going to go to setup and then you're going to click. These are your X and Y uh, arrows. This is your orientation of where you're going to start your cut. So we click on that and then we come down here and we're going to click this. And that's where we're going to start our cut. So that's where we'll zero out the machine in Mach 3. We'll hit zero, zero, zero. And it'll be right there on that corner of the material that we're going to cut. And we just hit OK. Then you go to Cutting, 2D Profile, select the tool. And we have another video that tells you how to create tools in Fusion. So we have all of these already. So we're just going to go to 16 gauge, fine cut, highlight it, hit select, the geometry, the, the things that you want to cut, you can left click on that. And then this one is heights right here. We're going to ignore that one. We're going to go right to passes, left click, hit smoothing. That's real important. So what that's going to do, that's going to take out any extra nodes or points that might be on this design that you don't really need, that the computer doesn't need. So then the next thing we're going to go right Keep on going to the right. We're going to go to linking. You're going to left click on linking. And this gives you your lead in and lead out and your lead in sweep angle. And you can play with these as you guys get better with this and you start experimenting. So because this is a big piece, or in, it's just going to be one outside cut. It's going to be real simple. I'm going to make this lead in radius 0.2. It'll be a nice wide sweep. And you'll see that. And then I hit OK. And the computer does its thinking. We have a green check that tells us that it created a path for everything in the design. Sometimes it'll have a little orange um, like warning symbol, and that's okay too, as long as the points that it missed, you don't care if it cuts or not. Um, but that that can be you, you'll as you work through this and you'll understand why sometimes the the computer doesn't pick up all of the profiles because either uh, your lead in and lead out is too big, so it can't fit in there. It, it doesn't have uh, enough space to do the lead in and lead out. Um, so there's other ways around that. You can completely remove the lead in and lead out as one option, and a lot of times that'll, that'll solve your problems. But anyway, um, as I digress here, we see, uh, so, okay, so we have our profile done. We're gonna right click on profile, and we're gonna do simulate, and this is important. This is something I do on every design just to make sure it's going to cut how I want to. Hit play. And this is exactly how it's going to cut on your machine. So if you don't like the way that it's going to cut, you can go back. I'll hit exit. That everything looks good. You can go back on here. You right click it. You can go to edit. And then you can change some of these parameters. Like one of the things you can change is position for lead in. And I select it and I want to move it to over here. So I move it to there. For whatever reason, that's where I want the machine to start making its cut. I'll hit OK. And then we'll go over here. I'll right click on that again, hit simulate, hit play. And you can see here, that's where it that's where it did lead in, and then it's gonna finish the cut and do its lead out right there. And it's still this is gonna be the zero because that's where you told it to be, told it to go. So we're gonna exit simulation. And now the 
post-process, the moment I've all been waiting for. So we'll right click on that, we go to post-process. Now here, you can see we already have ours in here, but you won't, you're not gonna have anything. And you have this whole drop-down menu, they have, you know, you can choose a bunch from the library, but let me tell you, none of them are gonna work for Mach 3. At least we couldn't find any. So I'll email it to you and you'll download it to your computer and put it in some place that you can remember. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to this little envelope and it says our file and it says select post from the library and you left click on that and you'll see ours is already here. But if I wanna add one, you're gonna come up here where it says import. You'll left click on import and then it'll bring up mock 3 plasma underscore G31. Now that is the file that I will send you. It'll be a CPS file and it's 25 kilobytes. And then you'll just hit open and it'll bring it into Fusion. So now it's in Fusion. Let's see, I'm gonna choose it. Well, let's see. Okay, that one. So here, when you, when you bring it in, it's gonna be all in metric. And you're gonna have to put in your own parameters for the cut height, the pierce delay, pierce height, probe offset, which is negative 0.16 for our machine, and that's for the tuck off. That's how far the probe um, will push down when it hits the the port track control switch or the touch off switch. It'll push down 0.16, and that's how ours is negative 0.16, and that's how it determines the 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 height of material on the table. And then the safe Z is 0.5. So what that is is every time the torque gets down to the cut, it's gonna raise up 0.5 of an inch or 0.5 or half of an inch before it moves to its next cut. So if you have a lot of intricate cuts that'll have a lot of drops and might get in the way of the torch head, you might wanna increase that. But just keep in mind when you increase that, that's gonna increase the cut time. So then here you just name it whatever you want. So we're gonna name it test two and um, here is where you tell it where to write it. So this little file here, we have it on, let's see, desktop cutting, okay? But if you have a USB drive, you can tell it to put the D drive, that's what it says for us anyway, when you put a USB in. But just for this, I'm gonna put it in the, in the cutting on my desktop. Okay, so that's all done, we'll hit post. You'll get a little dialog box that the NC code successfully posted, right? And then we'll go here and we'll go to cutting, test two. I'll just give you a, a preview of what it's gonna look like. So this is, there we go. So this is what it's gonna look like. This is what Mach 3 reads in order to run your torch. This is what this is the code that Mach 3 needs. And you'll see there's gonna be a bunch of G's and X's and Y's and uh, all these numbers. And they're just a bunch of code that the Mach 3 uses to move your torch around the table. Uh, let's see, yep, and that's it. So once you have that, you impact, you input that into your computer that has Mach 3, you, uh, you'll go to load code on Mach 3. Close this out. You'll go to load code on Mach 3 and you pick the, that file that you just made, the, the test two, if that's what you named it. You, uh, you click on that and then it'll load it into Mach 3 and then you can be ready to cut. So I hope that's helpful. Again, if you guys have any more questions on how to do this, let me know. We're happy to help. That's why we're here. That's uh, one big reason why we do these videos, so we can help other people. Um, like I said, we were self-taught, and that was fine. It was a struggle, and we learned a lot along the way. But, but uh, yeah, it was cool. And yeah, But that's why we're doing this now. So, yeah, again, I'll put that email in the description. Feel free to give me send me an email, and I'll send that code over to you. And if you have any other questions, Drop them down in the comments below. Uh, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate everyone watching. And remember, if I can do it, I know you can do it. Thanks for watching.